First of all, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I was a huge Jason Voorhees fan. I absolutely loved Friday the 13th. But one day in 1995, I believe it was, that all changed. Basically, what happened was I came home from school and I played Nintendo a little bit, and I mean the original Nintendo, and my mom looked into the TV guide, as she always does. So she looked at it, and she told me that this movie called Halloween was coming on. And I admit, I didn't want to see it. All I cared about was Jason, Jason this, and Jason that, Jason, Jason, Jason. And then my brother said, well, he's sort of like Jason. Now, here's the thing. I had heard people talk about Michael Myers before, but I never knew that he was actually in Halloween. So when she told me about this Michael Myers person, I, you know, I just didn't connect the dots at the time. So basically what happens is the movie's getting ready to come on. And as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, I think it came on channel 17. Or, you know, it was also known as PHL 17 back then. And then later it became the WB, WB-17. So anyway, it comes on and there's this big ass pumpkin on the screen with this weird music, music like I'd never heard before. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought it was a bit feminine. And then when I saw what Michael Myers looked like, that didn't help matter as much. But we'll get to that in a second. So I'm listening to the theme and everything, and I didn't like it at first. But the movie comes on, and I see this POV, and she tells me that this is Michael Myers going towards his house. By she, I mean my mom. And he goes inside the house, and I said, well, what's he doing? She said he's going to get a knife. And so that's when I knew he was about to go kill someone. He goes upstairs, stabs his sister, and he goes out the door, and that's when his parents catch him. Then they go to the scene where they're talking about his parole hearing and Dr. Loomis is saying how he's dangerous and stuff like that and then they do the scene where Michael is in the asylum room and he's just sitting in the chair and I'm thinking to myself what the fuck is wrong with this guy you know I've always thought Michael Myers was weird because he's just sitting there He's literally just sitting there, staring at the wall, like Dr. Loomis said. And I'm thinking, what, what's wrong with him? Now, this is when things get really interesting. So he breaks out of the asylum and makes his way to Haddonfield. And he starts following Lori and Linda and Annie. And when he kept following them in the car, I'm thinking to myself, this guy is just fucking weird. I, I'm sorry I keep saying weird, but you wanted my honest reaction to Halloween 1978. I don't know how else to describe this guy. That's how I honestly felt at the time. I just thought he was really weird. And he was really creeping me out with that fucking music. And how he kept following them around like that. Because Linda 
She was saying some shit about, oh, this guy's following me named Steve Todd. And I, I was getting really scared. Because it's like, how come you can't see him? Look, he's right there. He's right there. And I just got really sad because I knew he was going to kill them. You know, and I was thinking, I wish it was some way that I could tell them that he's right there. But as the night went on, he basically stalked them and he got Annie first. He starts choking her and shit and the, the vision is a little obscured. You can't see exactly what he's doing. But I knew he was choking her. And then I heard this sound that basically went Buzz! And then I saw her die. And I said, well, what did he do? And my mom made this gesture with her finger. She took her finger and slid it across her throat, trying to tell me that Michael cut Annie's throat. So next thing, Bob and Linda come home and basically I'm just literally sitting there waiting for them to get killed. And I'm like, oh man, this guy, this Michael Myers guy is going to get them. And I was eight years old at the time, you know, I was kind of scared. Because this movie's creepy, you know, I'm eight years old, you know, don't judge me, I'm just a kid. But anyways, I'm giving you guys my honest reaction, I'm telling you. This was me in 1995, man. I, You know, I'm a little, little fanatic at this time. So anyway, Bob said he wanted a beer and Linda didn't want to do it, so Bob had to go do it. And when I saw Michael grab him and lift him up by the neck, it's like, what the fuck is he doing? I'm telling you, I am i don't know any other word to describe him. You know, like I said, I'm telling you guys how I honestly felt. And he stabbed him and put him on the wall. And he's just looking at him, turning his head back and forth. And I'm like, this movie is creeping me the fuck out. Seriously. I wasn't really scared of Jason. But Michael Myers was actually scary. Because he was doing weird shit. So, anyway. He comes up the stairs dressed as a ghost. And Linda's talking to him and, you know, making jokes with him and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, Linda, turn around. That's not your boyfriend. That's that Michael Myers guy. He's going to kill you. That's what I was honestly thinking. And then it played the music. It was like, duh, da 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 And I was hoping she would turn around. You know, I'm thinking to myself, that's that guy. That's the guy, the killer. He's going to kill you. She didn't turn around. So he starts choking her with the phone. And eventually his, his sheet comes off. And I saw this white face and I'm saying to my mom, Mom, what's wrong with his face? I didn't know that was the mask. I thought it was his face. And she said that he was wearing a mask so long story short he starts chasing Jamie Lee Curtis and every time Jamie Lee Curtis tried to do something to him he would get back up she stabbed him with a knitting needle she stabbed him in the lungs none of that stuff worked so Eventually, she took his mask off. And when I saw that he was just some white guy, I felt a little bit better. 
And you might say, well, what does race have to do with it? Nothing at all. But I'm telling you my thoughts as an eight-year-old kid. I was like, oh, he's just some white dude, you know? So, so I felt better about it. Because, you know, he was just a guy under there. But anyway, every time Jamie would do something to him, I would say, Mom, is he dead? And she would say, no. But then when Dr. Loomis shot him, and he fell out the window, my mom said, now you know he's going to disappear like a ghost. She said, you know, he's going to disappear. And so Loomis shot him, and he fell out the window, and I said, is he dead now? And my mom was cracking up. I said, what's so funny, you know? I said, is he dead? She said, no. So she was cracking up because he wouldn't die. That made her laugh. She gets a kick out of that. So anyway, he disappears and that creepy music comes on. And she says, oh, he's going to come back in part two, which he did. And I'm going to tell you guys about that tomorrow, God willing. Everything goes all right. So anyway... That's John Carpenter's Halloween. It showed all the places where he'd been. And I just thought he was really weird and creepy. I went to school the next day, told all my friends about it. Now, I was still a Jason fan. But there was room in my heart for a new villain. And his name was Michael Myers. This has been my official reaction for Halloween 1978 the night he came home I'll be back tomorrow to give you the reaction for Halloween 2 more of the night he came home